So today on Stuart Talk, we have the one, the only, uh, Miss Azuri Garrett. How you doing? <laughs> I'm doing good. It's an honor to have you. I know you've been busy. I know your season um, lasted a little longer, but that's for a good reason because you went to states. Uh, where did you place in the states? Oh, I placed third in 300 hurdles. Third, 300. Congratulations. That's awesome. A lot of people don't never make it down there. That's their dream. That's their goal. And you were able to get there. Um, I believe in my heart, just as well, I know you will be, you're going to get that number one spot. Maybe one, maybe two. Yeah. Okay, let's get this started before I don't hold you all day. Um, so when, what age did you first start running track? Um, I believe I was like 12 or 13, like middle school age. Did you yeah. have a passion for it? Did you just do it just to do it? Or you really always wanted to do it? Or did you see somebody else do it? Um, I just wanted to do it just to do it. And I was I was pretty decent at running. I wasn't the fastest, but I just wanted to try it out. Was that when you were playing uh, softball and baseball as well? Because I know yeah. you did more sports. You was doing all that back then too? Yeah, I was doing uh, softball and cheer. Okay. Um. You placed third in the state championship. Uh, how did you feel that moment after you crossed the finish line? You found out your time. They gave you your medal. What was going through your mind? I was I was filled with so much excitement because I knew my mom was very proud of me, and I knew that I had like represented my school very well. And I was just yeah. proud of how far I came. Yeah. That was that was everything. I know me seeing the headline, seeing it on the news, seeing everybody talk about it, the support even from your school. So uh, that was a big thing. So um, what was your thoughts leading into this year, being that you ran last year as a freshman and you made it kind of far? Did you have any kind of adjustments? What did you do different last year that you did this year? This year, I definitely like I became more confident with my running because I knew that like more people were going to be watching me and I was going to have more competitors. So I just like became very confident and more intentional with my running. Oh, you said two great words, confident and intentional. A lot of athletes, uh, especially a lot of youth athletic, athletic people, they don't be confident there. They're lacking confidence. So the fact that you knew that you needed to get there to that point is everything because you're supposed to be confident in, your, in yourself um, and, and your ability and believe because that's what pushes you forth to the next step. So that was great that you picked up on that. Um, let me ask you a question. What does that, you mentioned family earlier, your mom and uh, shout out to Tisha. Um, <laughs> family, I know they support you, your god mom, Tasha, uh, Cook, your god dad, your family, your granny, your granddad. What does family mean to you? Family means like someone who's always there for me and supporting me. Like my mom, she always shows up to my track meets, sunshine or rain. She's just always there cheering me on. And it makes me feel good. Like and your story is unique because do you know who Deion Sanders is? No. Deion Sanders is a football player. He used to play football and uh, baseball as well. Now he coached for the Colorado Buckeyes. But he played an NFL football game, got on a private jet, and flew to a a baseball game. The reason why I said that because it's been a time where I, your mom said you had a cheer competition, yeah. these many hundred miles, and then she had to take you to the track meet. Like, what you're doing yeah. is unbelievable. A lot of kids say, I only want to play one sport because I can't. They might not know how it looks, but you are a representative of how to compete at a high level in multiple sports to do it as a sophomore. That's 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 incredible. Yeah. What, what would you say to a, um, a young athlete or student that wants to play multiple sports? that might not think that they can do it what would you say to that I would say be humble because there's going to be people that are better than you but you just need to keep focused on your own path and your own progression so I feel like if you just focus on yourself and like have confidence in yourself you can do it yeah can you describe a particular challenge uh moment during your career this year and how you overcame it <clears throat> um Oh, I would say learning how to 100 hurdle. This is my first year learning it, and I picked up really fast, and I still got the states with it. So it was just really complicated because I was scared, but I just I still did it, and I got where I need to be. So did you trust in yourself? Did you have faith? Was you praying? What does faith mean to you? Faith means just like just like trusting myself and holding on to that little voice in my head telling me I can do it. I can do it. Ooh, <laughs> I can do it even though if I'm scared. Yeah. Yeah, that's everything. Um, so what advice would you give somebody that's starting out um, track 
um, and they lack in the confidence. What uh, would you tell them they need to do to work to get better from year to year? I would say just be consistent because a lot of them, like, they're worried about others. Just stay consistent. And then that's how they get unmotivated because they see people better than them. But you're your own person. I feel like if you just focus on what you're doing, you'll be able to get where you want to be. Yeah, that's good. Um, so where are your future goals in both sports, whether it be competition, cheer, cheerleading at the next level or track? What do you plan to do when you go to the next level in school? I want to continue running track in college and hopefully do cheer if it's not too much. But I'm balancing yeah. it out like right now pretty good. So I just want to continue that in college and hopefully get some scholarships. Yes. So are you looking to get a scholarship and then pick and choose or do you got in your head what school that you might want to attend? Mm -hmm. Um, I have one school in particular. I was thinking Kentucky because they have really good hurdlers there and a really good track program. So yeah. So, um, what um the the she's an Olympian. She ran the hurdle. Did she go to Kentucky State? Yeah, Sydney McLuckin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's so crazy. Before I knew you knew about it, I was talking to your mom about it. And she says, "Zuri, love her. Yeah, she a beast. I I can see I can see your style and her is kind of similar. So that's good. That's yeah. good." What, the question that I wanted to ask you was, how do you stay so humble even though you're on the news, you're getting interviewed, you're winning, you're winning multiple uh, uh, medals? How many medals you win this year? I, I won a lot. I have to count them. There's, there's a handful. <laughs> Not to brag, yeah. but a lot. Yeah, but see, that's that's humble, though. Most people be like, yeah, I got 13. I got 10 at this meet. Like, you, you're so humble. And that's good that you're humble because – it's, it's not bad for you to know that you're confident, but you're not prideful. You don't got arrogancy. Like, you do what you need to do, and it's on to the next meet. Just like when you won, them, uh, what was the district, the regionals, up until state, it was like, okay, I know what I need to do. The job, the task in hand. And that's what kids need to know as well out there because you know it's a lot of people that's looking up to you. It's going to be a lot of little kids that know who you are because you're winning and you run fast and you're doing hurdles that they might want to pick up on you, just like your little sister. Yeah. Like, you're being a great shining light. And that's why I say, um, it's good to be a good representative now when your sister look at you she gonna know my sister did all this and her grades is good because you're all standing in the classroom and on the track and you're showing that you can do it at a high level and that's what needed to be done and this generation of kids need to know you can excel in the classroom and on the, whatever sport you choose so you're being a good demonstration on that so I applaud you for that as well um, how do you balance school work and athletics because you excel in the classroom like we just talking about and you excel in the sport you play and even competition. How do you balance it? Um, I use a lot of resources. I go to my mom if I need help or my friends, but mostly I just like time manage it. Like I'll do some work at school and then I know I have to get right home and go to practice. So I just don't want to like overlap stuff. So I just get it done basically. Yeah. Um, is there any particular skills or abilities that you credit to your success? Um, I would say, like, I don't, I would say, like, not being too hard on myself. Like, I'm hard on myself sometimes, but, like, after, like, I have did the task, I reassure myself very well. Yeah. yeah. Did, did you see the difference between you uh, training really uh, tough this summer to when you uh, first started the season to the end of the season. Could you be? Could you tell the difference? Yes, definitely. I felt the difference, like in workouts and stuff. It still hurt it. It still hurt it. <laughs> but I felt the difference, and yeah. I knew that I could like do the last um workout that I needed to do or do the last lap. Yeah, shout out to Dorian Hooker, too. He got a great program, and all the athletes that work with him, and they be like, it's tough. They get through it, but you see the progression and you see the results, like on the track itself. Yeah. Um. So what would you say to um, kids your age that's a stri uh, don't know what to do, whether it's sports, or whether it's a particular career? What advice would you give to them if they're just lost or they're trying to find their identity? Because you know your identity, you're walking in it, you're confident in it. You even got different options just in case this don't work. You got this and you even excel. What would you be able to tell them if they're searching and, and need to know that um, they can find their identity just for they won't, you know, be down on themselves or even give up? 
I would say try new things. I've tried like four different sports. Some didn't go well, but then I found like the two that I really liked and I'm progressing in them. So just really try new things and see if you like it. If you don't, then switch to something else. Yeah, that's good. Well, thank you. I appreciate your time and your effort. And like I just said, I wanted to highlight and spotlight you on your great accomplishments in the classroom, on the field, and even with competition. Because what you're doing is, is unique and you need to be, you know, spotlighted and just know that you can do it. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you, gives you the strength to be able to to continue to give you the capacity you need to be able to endure, you know, um, and just don't never give up. Keep God first and keep shining light. We appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you.